Welcome to the Chase Podcast. Dr. Ron Charles is a renowned archaeologist, author, historian, speaker, missionary, and is known as the Christian Indiana Jones. Visit cubitfoundation.org for Dr. Ron's books and information about this global ministry. You remember, you remember the Arab Spring a few years ago? Yeah. <laughs> when it was everything and anything but spring. Well, Egypt was involved with that. And the Muslim Brotherhood were elected uh, to be uh, the new rulers of Egypt. And so the terrorist group Muslim Brotherhood came into power. And when President Marshi got in there, he was determined to eliminate Christianity from Egypt totally, and that he was going to have a mass imprisonment, if not even uh, uh, execution of, uh, of Christians. He would give them an opportunity to leave the country, but if they didn't leave, they were done for. Well, the young advisors says, yes, do it. We're, we're all for you. But the older advisors, the one that had some sense, he says, you can't do that. He said, if you do something like that, you become an enemy of the world. Everyone will be against you. And your time here will be just a few days. And we will be in very, very bad trouble. What we suggest is this. Now, in Egypt, at that time, if you were a Muslim and you accepted Jesus as your Savior, uh, if, if you were in the city, the city of Cairo or the city of Alexandria, then they would place you in the garbage dump. And there you'd live for the rest of your life uh, in the garbage. But if you're on the outside of the cities, then they placed you in what they call uh, refuse cities. And this is uh, uh, a blocked, blocked out area that was kind of the size of a little village. And Muslims who had accepted Jesus, they were... Uh, they were placed in these little villages and they had to stay there uh, under guard. And so uh, the older advisors uh, convinced him. He says, what, 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 what you need to do is pick out one of these villages as, a, uh, as an example, example to the people. So take that village and then we will eliminate them. We will imprison them. We'll shoot them. Whatever we need to do, we'll eliminate them. And that will, uh, and then America and England and the EU, they'll be angry with us for a couple of weeks, but then it'll blow over and then we'll be back to normal. And so they agreed to this. So they contacted the, uh, uh, one of the leaders of the little village that they were going to exterminate. It was about 100, 120 people there. And um, they said the date at which it was going to happen. And uh, the, uh, the leader there of, of the village, he was just beside himself, didn't know what to do. And uh, I was in Dubai at the time. And uh, so I got a call from this, this guy in the village explaining to me what was going to happen and what was going on. And so um, I, I, I told him, I said, I, I, I don't know what I can do. I mean... What, 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 what can I do in this situation? He says, I don't know, but I felt like I needed to contact you. I said, okay. So I, I, um, I got the next flight out of Dubai to, uh, to Cairo, and as I was flying back, uh, flying over there, I just kind of felt the Lord nudge me, and he says, you need to have a meeting with the, the terrorist groups that are, uh, that are there. I said, God, you've got to be kidding me. I said, uh, I, this thought, I rebuked this thought, but, but, but it, was, it was God, okay. it was God. So when I landed uh, in Cairo, I, I made a arrangement with some friends of ours to set up a meeting. And so we set it up in, the, um, in, uh, in downtown Cairo where there's plenty of people around. And so the meeting was be held with uh, Al-Qaeda, with ISIS, Hezbollah, and uh, uh, and Mossad, and oh, not not Mossad. That's Israel. 
Anyway, there's four terrorist groups, Muslim Brotherhood. And um, so I, uh, I walked in and uh, to the meeting and there's, there's all these guys are there with their guns and so forth. And uh, so I introduced myself and uh, the guy who's the leader of the Al Qaeda is a, was the spokesman. And, uh, and uh, he says, I know who you are. Now, what do you want? Um, I said, I just need, uh, I, I need your permission. I, I, I need you, uh, I, need, I need you to uh, 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 give me permission for a certain thing. He says, what permission, for what? And then before I had a chance to say anything, he says, oh, wait, just stop. Then he held his hand out like this. He says, you see this? I said, yeah. He says, this is me. And this is us. And you are standing in my hand. And at any moment that I wanted to, I can crush you. And that should cause you great, great fear. And I said, I do understand. I said, but you got one thing that was wrong. I am standing in a hand, but the hand I'm standing in is God. And only he can crush me. No one else. And that should cause you great fear. And he says, ah, ah, forget it. What do you want? Well, you know, the, these guys have been following us for years. For years. They, they camp it. They're out in front of our house and tap our telephones and, and follow us every place we go. And, and, and anything. It's all, it's all the time. 24 hours a day, they'd be following us around. And I said, what, what I want is I want your permission for me to uh, do some errands. So what do you mean errand? What does that mean? I said, I need to do some, some things. He said, why? I said, this is for friends of mine. He says, well, if they're your friends, they must be Christian. And I said, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to tell you. All the thing I'm going to tell you is that I need to do something for some friends, and I need for you to leave me alone. For two days and two nights, do not follow me. Do not tap my phone. Just leave me alone for two days and two nights. And before this meeting, I had gone out to the village, and I told the leader of the village, I said, I want you to, in two days from now, at midnight in two days, I want you to have all of your people ready to leave. He says, how? How, what? What? how can I leave? I said, don't worry about it. Just have them ready to leave. He said, okay. So I told the, this Al-Qaeda guy, I said, you just give me two days. No one follows me. Just leave me alone. He says, you recognize my authority. I said, yes, I do. I, I recognize your authority. He says, you recognize I have the power to grant you this. I said, I do. You have, I know that you have the power to spare a person's life or to take a person's life. And I recognize that authority. He says, okay. Because you recognize my authority, then I will give you your two days. But do not ask for anything else. Okay, that's all I want. And, they, and he did. They, they were, uh, to their credit, they, he kept his word. So for two days, I prepared how to try to get these people out. So I ended up renting a uh, hundred camels. And so, you know, we, we, we've, been, we've been in Egypt for now going on 31 years. And I have never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, ever, never, never seen fog in Egypt. <laughs> never. But on that night, it was so foggy that I couldn't even see my camel's head that I was riding. 
It was that foggy. Well, I had called Paula and told her what was going on. And she said, I'm going to put out the word throughout the world. And we're going to pray that God makes you invisible. I said, okay, I'm, I'm for that. And so I led these camels, 100 camels, out to the village. And like I said, it was a foggy. You couldn't even see nothing. Uh, and so we loaded up the, um, the people. And for some reason, the guards uh, were out of the way. Oh, they were, they were watching. A, uh, uh, Egypt was having a, a soccer match with uh, South Africa. And so the guards were looking at this, this uh, soccer game, so they didn't even know what was going on. And so the people were out there, and we loaded them up. And there's about a, there were 122 people, and so some of them had to ride double on these camels. And so the first check stop we came to was an Al-Qaeda uh, check stop. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, so I stopped, and the, the leader there, uh, heard uh, the camels down down the row couldn't see them but he heard them he says where, where, what are you doing with these camels i said i'm taking them to friends and uh, he said give me your purchase receipt i said i have no purchase receipt i i hired these camels they're a lease and uh, i said i'll bring them back the same way i'll come right through here and uh he says we must check you you have contraband I said, no, no contraband. Guns, no guns. Uh, you have anything you're not supposed to have? I said, no. He said, we must check. So he sent his guards down the whole line of camels. And while they were doing that, I was praying. I said, Lord, people are praying all over the world that I am invisible. But I'm not invisible. He saw me, and now these soldiers are going to discover the people on the camels. They'll be arrested. They'll be imprisoned or killed. I'll be in prison. God, I don't understand what you're doing. You're not even answering my prayers. You didn't even acknowledge my prayers. And the prayers of my wife, and her prayers are real, very powerful. She's got me out of some major scrapes, you know. When, uh, when God wakes her up at 2 o'clock in the morning and says, you pray for Ron, she don't even question. She says, okay. And so, I, and so God was not even answering her, I felt. And so I was prepared fully to be arrested right then and there. When the guys came back, uh, the leaders, the officer said, uh, is this all you have? I said, what you see is what I have. He says, go. And so we left. And God chose not to make me invisible that night. But what he did do, he made the people that were standing on top of the camels visible, invisible. They were not seen by those soldiers. We got them to Chad safely and those folks were spared i came back the same way to satisfy this officer and god worked a tremendous miracle but it wasn't an answer to the prayer that i had laid out for god specifically <laughs> the the way that God should have done it. I, I, I already knew how that could happen. But he didn't even pay any attention to me. God did what he chose to do. And the prayer and the promise was answered. What is your prayer today? What is the promise that God has given you? That promise that he gave you last week or last year or how about last decade, 25 years ago, and you've been waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it. The new job, 
the bankruptcy to go away. The healing of the body to be secured. The salvation of son or daughter. The salvation of neighbor, a boss. Anything that is in your life that you feel absolutely confident about that God has promised it to you, but you haven't received it. Are you in that state? I want to tell you that your prayer will be answered. It may not be the way that you want it to. You may have to go through the bankruptcy, but God will make a way. And he'll make a way where there seems to be no way. He may not heal your body miraculously as you pray, but it will be healed. The salvation of those loved ones, it may not come in a church. It may come in a bar. It may come in an automobile driving down the road. It may come as a result of an automobile accident. But it will happen. The prayer will be answered. The promise will be fulfilled. But it may take the Eurocliton. It may take the viper. The assured death of the thing. It may take the storms. It may take being at the bottom with all the filth landing on top of you. And you can do nothing about it. But he will come through. That is a guarantee. We're going to say a prayer here in just a moment before I turn it back. And I want you to think about it. Think about that promise that you have. The promise that God has made you. Think about the prayer that you've prayed, waiting for that answer. And then this morning as we pray, then present that to God one more time. But this time, say, Lord, I don't care if I have to go through the Eurocliton. I don't care if I have to go through the filth and the garbage. And I don't care if I have to go through the bite of the viper, I'm going to trust you and trust you completely. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the stripes that were laid upon his body, that ripped his body beyond recognition. We know we didn't have to do it. We know that he chose to do it because of his love for us. Now, these folks here this morning, they've been given assurances. They've been given promises. They have been given guarantees that yet has not been fulfilled. And Lord, they've trusted you. They've trusted you. They've believed in you. They're still in your word. They've declared it. They accept it. But it still hasn't happened. Now, Lord, look at the hearts of each one of them that are here. They're thinking about that thing. They're thinking about that guaranteed salvation of the loved one. They're thinking about the new job, the new position, the new house. They're thinking about that ministry that you've called them into. They're thinking about their future. Where do we go from here? And what do we do from now on? Now, Father, honor your word and who you are 
and give them that absolute assurance that their prayer is a done deal. And the promise that you made to them, it is absolutely guaranteed and they can trust you for it. And we just thank you for this, Lord. So in the name of Jesus, the salvations are theirs. The answered prayers are theirs. The financial stability is theirs. The assurance of the future is theirs. And we thank you for it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Charles of the Cubit Foundation. You know, we've been in Middle East for going on 30 years. And I would love to come to your church or your meeting to let you know what's happening uh, in reality in the Middle East. And uh, we'd love to come there and let you know what's happening, what the Lord's doing in that part of the world. So if you can contact us at the thecubitfoundation.org, then we could come to your place. And if you would like to find out more about us, then go to www.cubitfoundation.org. Thank you. The Chase with Dr. Ron Charles is sponsored by supporters of the Cubit Foundation. Visit cubitfoundation.org for Dr. Ron's books and discover how you can support this global ministry.